These are the effects of mass media in our lives. Most of us buy, we laugh, we indulge ourselves by what we see on TV. We are entertained by what we see. In a way, the media is a very powerful tool to keep us from knowing what's going on in the world. We feel as if our lives doesn't consist of the problem that's existing worldwide. We are accepted by society based on the facts and the fashion that the media has imposed on us and we become ignorant by choice that the majority of us put aside the real problems that is existing outside our homes like those who are harming innocents. Persecution is the act of harassing, oppressing, or killing people because of their difference from society. Christians are persecuted because their difference in Jesus Christ as Savior and do not conform our lives to the ungodliness of a sinful world. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26 says, If one member suffers, all suffers together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Today, Christians in more than 60 countries are persecuted for their faith, while there are many Christians who do not face persecution. We are called to be united. That's the reason why in the Christian community we should not have a such thing as denominations. Denominations mean divisions. Satan comes to divide. He attacks his enemy. He does not attack his own. Remember that. A study released this month shows Christianity is now the dominant religion in sub-Sahara Africa, where once Christians and Muslims combined made up less than a quarter of its population, the region now has 21% of the world's Christians. The number of Muslims grew from 11 million in 1900 to 234 million in 2010. Christians have grown from 7 million in 1990 to the current 470 million. 57% of the population is Christian, while 29% is Muslim. Now this region between the Sahara Desert and the Cape of Good Hope is home to one in five of all the Christians in the world. The study was conducted by the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life and involved 25,000 face-to-face interviews in 90 countries representing the Sub-Sahara Africa. The report notes that Sub-Saharan African Christians and Muslims generally have a positive view of each other, and in most countries, relatively few people think there is hostility against Muslims or Christians. While Sub-Sahara Africa has almost twice as many Christians as Muslims, On the African continent as a whole, the two faiths are roughly balanced, with 400 million to 500 million followers each. You see, it brings happiness to my heart when I see or even witness an individual coming to Christ. But there also is another sad part where people are being prosecuted as well because of Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean that it should stop. We should constantly keep growing and telling others about him, regardless of persecution or not. Latest attack on Christianity overseas, you got four Iranian Christians reportedly got 80 lashes for drinking wine during communion. This comes less than a week after Islamist gunmen killed four people, including two young girls, at a Christian wedding in Egypt. So why are Christians being persecuted abroad, and why isn't anyone talking about this? Fox News legal analyst Peter Johnson We're Jr. talking about it, and it's literally a fight for faith. Let's look at what's gone on just in the last month, Brian, and then let's talk about it. Nairobi, Kenya, September 21st, Islamist extremists attacked the shopping mall. You remember that? Targeting all non-Muslims. Remember, there was a test whether you knew the Muslim religion, 67 killed. Then Peshawar, Pakistan, September 22nd, Taliban suicide bombers killed at least 85 at the All Saints Church. Then Iraq, Syria, September 27th, Islamist rebels attack two Christian churches. October 4th, in Mombasa, Kenya, Muslims riot and set fire to a Christian community. There, four killed. And in Cairo, gunmen kill at least four, including two young girls at a Coptic Christian wedding in Cairo. So if Christians are saying, what, what are you getting me involved for? What's your problem with Christians? It's not like Christians are on the offensive. This is a horribly ignored issue. Uh, the, the Christian population in the Mideast has declined precipitously in the last century. They are under attack in the Mideast and in other places around the world. 
A brilliant article in the Los Angeles Times by Mr. Nassatir yesterday pointed out that we're coming up on the 75th anniversary of Kristallnacht, the beginning of the persecution of the Jews by the Nazis. And he said, let's look at history. Let's see what's happening then and what's happening now. Are there parallels? Is the American government responding to it? Effectively not. Is the UN responding to it? Effectively not. There is a bill in Congress, H.R. 301, that calls for an envoy in the Mideast to address this issue. And it's very easy for us to do it, not saying it would be 100% successful, but you would say, listen, you better start securing the Christians in your community or the aid's going to stop. Our troops are not going to keep coming. And some of the people tweeted us that this morning. They said, stop the aid now in order to stop these exactly. terrorist attacks on Christians. It's a very important and disturbing issue. Are we too PC to say it? The American government over the last 40 years, they say, yeah, there's political terror, but is there religious terror? Are we strong enough to step up and say that religious terror exists in the world? Well, it does. And what about you? What do you about the role that the Vatican's playing? Do you think it's strong enough? I think the Vatican is playing a stronger role than it has in the past. They're speaking out even more. They need to speak out on this particular issue. They speak out for all kinds of religions. They should also be speaking up for Christianity as it goes forward. Yeah, I think they're taking a strong role, and it's welcome and necessary, absolutely. All right, Peter, have a great weekend. You Thanks have a so great much. weekend, too, Brian. All right. All right. Uh, meanwhile, 21 minutes into the bottom of the hour. Excuse me, make that 11 minutes. I'll do the math. Peter, <laughs> okay. you threw me off. Uh, Christians, the subject of persecution and attacks across the Middle East. The latest example in Egypt, where more than 40 Coptic Christian churches burned and looted. These acts, not surprising, even though the abuses have been largely ignored by the West. This according to a brand new book called Crucified Again, Exposing the New War on Christians. Author Raymond Ibrahim, pleased to welcome you. Thank you, sir, for joining us. How rampant is the persecution of Christians across the Middle East? It's immensely rampant, Laurie, and it's not just in the Middle East. It's essentially in the entire Islamic world, from the Arab world, Morocco to Iraq to East Asia, Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, to, of course, Sub-Saharan Africa, Somalia, Nigeria, Sudan, Uganda, and even in Europe and uh, in areas with heavy Muslim populations, Christians are under attack in a myriad of ways. Um, in the book, I go into, into the ways, including attacks on churches, as you just alluded earlier in Egypt in just the last few weeks, as much as 80 Christian churches and monasteries and uh, other Christian organizations have been attacked, torched, burned. Christians are in hiding, including mm. the Coptic Pope himself. That's and, unbelievable. Uh, it's, it's just happening all over the Islamic world, and it's really not being mentioned. And it's, it's so, Raymond, opinion, let me come in here with this. Crisis. And I know this isn't the most elegant way to ask this question, but throughout history, wasn't it always the Christians who were doing the persecuting? Why does it seem now the tables have turned? I mean, I, I, again, I don't know how, a better way to ask that question. No, I but, appreciate you know. what you're saying. Mm -hmm, I appreciate what you're saying. And what you're reflecting is basically the orthodox narrative of history, which unfortunately has nothing to do with reality. The fact is what we call the Arab world today, from Morocco to Iraq and Syria and Egypt and all these nations, were part of the Christian world in the seventh century. In fact, they made up half of what was then the Christian world, and they were taken over by Islamic conquest and force. And this has gone on for centuries. And then they went into the the Ottoman Empire came into Turkey, which of course is one of the oldest Christian regions, taken by bloodshed, went into the Balkans and Greece and was stopped finally at Vienna. Uh, the fact is, uh, the, the people who have persecuted and what we're seeing today has a long continuity with Islamic history. And the reason that we're not aware of this is it's not taught any longer. Yeah, why it's is that? Why do you think the expunged. West, Western media, Western academia is indifferent to the plight of Christians in the Muslim world? Well, there's a lot of reasons. I think one one of them is, uh, as I was pointing out earlier, there's a sort of uh, you know ingrained bias against Christians in the mainstream media, in, in amongst liberal circles, in academia, wherein Christians, as you just pointed out, are the historic persecutors and intolerant ones. And so you take that fact on the one hand, then you take the other fact, which is the people who are persecuting them left and right are now Muslims, and you realize that both of those narratives do not fit the mainstream paradigm because the politically correct narrative is such that Islam is peaceful and mm -hmm. here you have from one end of the Islamic world to the mm -hmm. other in nations that don't share anything, not race, not language, not social economic circumstances. And you go you so the far as to suggest that the Obama administration, the Obama administration is enabling this persecution. 
the Obama administration is enabling it in the sense that, especially in the guise of the so-called Arab Spring, which has proven to be a disaster in countries from Libya, in Egypt, now in Syria, the Obama administration has been very supportive of the Islamist organizations like the Muslim Brotherhood. And once these groups have come to power, we have seen a great nosedive in the human rights of Christians in countries like Libya, Egypt, and Syria. In Libya, where you never heard of any attacks on Christians because they're such a small minority, since the Al-Qaeda-linked rebellion took over thanks to our support and then they did Benghazi uh, several churches have been attacked and bombed Ner nuns have been attacked and kicked out of the country in Egypt under Morsi's one year of tenure uh, so uh, well over a dozen Christians were attacked and thrown in prison in the context of blasphemy breaking the blasphemy law by insulting uh, Islam mm -hmm. wherein in the 30 years of Mubarak none of that really happened and now in Syria the people that we are defending and, and talking about their human rights are in fact the ones who are violating the human rights of Christians and secularists and non-Muslims and Alawites and in fact there's a good there's good evidence if okay. you ask other people including people on the ground that the ones using the chemicals are the Syrian linked Al Qaeda jihadists well you are certainly a historian certainly well versed and well read and thank you for thank you. illuminating this topic uh, Raymond Ibrahim and once again the book is called crucified again on sale now online and in the bookstores everywhere or you can check out ludobs.com for links thank you again thank okay you. And from Egypt this morning, the story of a young girl calling on President Obama to save her family. She's 15 years old. Her name is Dina El Gohari, and she's written an emotional appeal to the president. She's asking him to use his influence to save her and her father from religious persecution. The two are converted Christians, and they live in a part of the world where conversion can mean death. They are also asking help for help to get to America. And Dana Lewis has been following this story for us. He's stream, streaming live to us this morning from Cairo, Egypt. Uh, good morning, Dana. Hi, Martha. You know, I mean, there, there is a new wave that Christians say uh, here in Egypt of, of violence and discrimination. In this particular case, this man and his 15-year-old daughter who tried to convert from being Muslim uh, to Christians were unsuccessful in the courts. And right now they say that they are on the run. We've been following them. They are indeed living in fear for their lives. Egyptian Maher al Gohari and his 15-year-old daughter, Dina, never pray twice at the same church. Never stay longer than a month in one apartment, constantly under threat, always on the run. Born Muslims, they became Christians after both of them say they had religious visions. al Gohari says he is being hunted. The Muslim... Uh know us, uh, then beginning uh, somebody tried to kill us. They will try to kill you? Yes. Several religious fatwas were issued for spilling his blood after Maher asked an Egyptian court to legally recognize his conversion. The court ruled even in a country that claims to recognize religious freedoms, a legal conversion to Christianity would threaten public order. There are anywhere from 8 to 14 million Christians in Egypt. Earlier this month, three Muslim men sprayed gunfire at a church in Upper Egypt, killing six Christians and wounding up to a dozen more. Christians rioted the next day. Dina has written a letter to President Obama asking for help. You said the Muslim minority in America are treated very well. So why are we not treated here likewise? We are imprisoned in our own home. I'll tell you uh, that we followed these two for a day here in Egypt. Uh, I won't tell you where they are for their own safety. They're not in Cairo anymore. Uh, but they have now uh, appeared before the U.S. Embassy a few days ago and also what's known as the U.S. Committee for International Religious Freedom uh, that has been here from America. They are asking for asylum for refugee status to get out of Egypt. They feel that they can't live here anymore. Back to you, Martha. Right, I'll see. Uh, interesting to see if they get any response uh, to their plea here in the United States. Dana, thank you very much. Dana Lewis with an interesting story from Egypt this morning. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 21 and 22, and Matthew chapter 24, verse 8 through 14, Christ reminds us that we will be hated on, but it does not mean we should stop loving one another. It does not mean that we should stop fighting for what's right. We should constantly move forward. We should constantly keep going forward and not stop just because of someone else's negligence or somebody else's attitude. Regardless of who you are and where you are, you will be hated on like Christ just said. But it doesn't mean that you should stop. Keep moving forward regardless of what people will say. God bless you.